Mark, having in mind uh, the situation that is now in Shebek, you know, can June 1, 2023 be considered the beginning of the end of Russia in its current form? I think in many ways um, the, uh, the taking over um, of Russia by, by the Kremlin and by Putin's regime uh, has set the conditions for uh, the collapse of uh, Russia, first of all, uh, in, um, in the diplomatic, in the international sp uh, arena, uh, in the information space. I mean, <laughs> the Russia has lost so much that they've lost their, uh, if they had any reputation, any, any, um, any <clears throat> positive, excuse me, positive attitude in the past. Uh, they've lost uh, so much economically uh, through the sanctions. I mean, they've really been uh, um, exposed as a brutal uh, terrorist regime. Um, and um, uh, I don't think, uh, uh, you know, everything that Putin has, has done really, and, and they have, uh, has led to the, uh, to the opposite effect. I mean, NATO is expanding, Ukraine is getting stronger. So now the question is again, uh, of course, uh, well, how, what about Russia itself? Uh, yeah, I think um, many in the West uh, have predicted uh, the collapse of Russia as a failed state. Uh, my good friend Janusz Bogaisky uh, from the Jamestown Foundation uh, has actually uh, written a book about Russia's collapse. He actually presented it at my university in Kiev, the American University of Kiev, um, a, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so uh, I think it's uh, just a matter of time uh, for Putin's regime to start losing control over uh, Russia, and then all sorts of um, military factions, you know, will start uh, fighting against uh, one another. You know, the Russian military, the mercenaries, Prigozhin, uh, the, uh, you know, the... Uh, uh, Kadyrov, you know, the Chechen leader, and others. So um, it, I think, uh, the, you know, the, the chaos that will follow will bring about the ultimately the collapse of, uh, of this criminal regime that is running uh, the country. But do you think uh, there is possibility of revolt in the Kremlin, I mean, inside Kremlin, after the failures uh, at the front? I would uh, very much hope so. I, I mean, as you know, uh, Russian and Soviet history, uh, indicates that um, um, quite often, the, more often than 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 uh, the not, the uh, leaders of the Kremlin have been replaced or deposed, um, taken down uh, by their own uh, entourage, by their own um, uh, circles of power. I mean, uh, uh, think of the uh, succession of Soviet leaders, uh, you know, over the last hundred years. And so um, they don't have a normal democratic mechanism to replace uh, uh, the leader to, to change uh, the power. Even even in China, before President Xi, for, for several decades, there was this uh, more or less uh, consensual mechanism where the elite would decide who would be next. But in this case, it's uh, winner takes all. So if um, you know, for, for Putin and for his closest confidants, it's a matter of life and death to stay in power. And therefore, the, you know, they, they need they, the only way to go is to be for them to be taken down. So, you know, I would imagine many in, in the within the Russian elite are unhappy uh, with the sanctions, with the way the war is going. So, you know, I think uh, there would be strong uh, tendencies uh, to uh, try to take uh, Putin down. Now, when exactly this would happen, it remains to be seen. But as I said, the uh, success of the uh, upcoming counteroffensive. Uh, I think would contribute a lot to the internal tensions within the Russia and then within the regime itself. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Latest news, trends, and analytics on Spotlight Ukraine. Like, share, and subscribe.